Well, hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. Well, guys, let me tell you, I do love and miss you, and I've continued to pray for you and your family and your children. I hope everything is going your way and that everything's all right. I have had to recover from something very serious that had happened to me, so I was in the hospital for a few days. It did nearly cost me my life, but today, what we're going to do is talk about the promises that the Lord made to us, because I saw with my own eyes while I was in that hospital bed the grace and the mercy and the love and the power of Jesus Christ. He brought me back, so I'm going to lift him up and I'm going to brag on him. And we're going to discuss some of those promises today because there's many different ones that he made to us. So I hope that you're doing well. Those of you that have prayed for me, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot, and I'm glad that you're still here. I did have a few people leave this channel, but that's okay. We're going to focus on the Lord. I believe the time is at hand, and I can't wait to be in the clouds with you guys. It is such an honor for me to be able to sit back down in this chair and do a Bible study with you guys. So let's go ahead and open up with prayer, and then we'll get started. And I really do appreciate you continuing to be here. Father, thank you so much for dying for our sins on the cross at Calvary. We are eternally grateful, and we believe the gospel to be true. We ask that you please bless the study with no interference and speak to our hearts and our minds. Open it up to your word, Lord, and show us what you want us to do, and we will. We will continue to wait patiently and humbly for you, Father, and we thank you for each and every provision that you give to us that we don't deserve. We believe the time is at hand, and we love you and we miss you. We can't wait to go home, but we will continue to work for the kingdom until you arrive. Thank you for sparing my life, Father, and putting me back in this chair. I ask that you please let these be your words today and not mine, and guide me as I deliver this message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so before we get into some of those promises that Jesus made to us, I really do want to look at 2 Corinthians 12, 9, because this is exactly what I just went through. I had to call 911 and get an ambulance and get transported to a hospital. They had to figure out what was going on with me, which was actually pretty serious, and they were saying that they needed to do emergency surgery at first. Well, then I got transferred to another hospital, and let me tell you, things began to uh, look a little bit more bleak. They began to really sink into me of how serious my condition was. And so what I chose to do, instead of being fearful, is cry out to the Lord and tell him, I'm not afraid to die. I love you. I thank you for everything that you've done for me and to please let your will be done. But he didn't kill me. I'm still here for a reason. Jesus saved me and he is my savior. So I would say hallelujah to that today. Hallelujah means deliverance from the wicked. And I was saying that in my hospital bed. I'm still saying it here as I record this message. God is so good, even at the point of death, when we feel like we can't take anymore. This is what he says, and I want you to read it with me today. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is what I'm talking about. Even, even when we feel weak, even when we feel tired, even when we feel like we are dying and we can't take one more thing, what does Jesus say to us? My grace is sufficient. The second part of this, what I really like, is where it says, My power is made perfect in weakness. Now, even though I was in the hospital for a few days in a really bad way, and all these different medicines in me, and this incredible fever, and all these different complications, let me tell you something. I was stronger in that environment than I ever have been in my entire life. God did not kill his servant. He was perfecting me. He was strengthening me and he healed me. And so what I'm going to do in turn is brag on him and give that testimony to you guys and let you know the power of Christ is real. He is all around us. He will never leave us. He will never fail us and he will never forsake us. Those are some of the promises we're going to take a look at. But this is where I wanted to start because I know I'm not the only one going through a hard time, especially with physical complications or illnesses and diseases. But you have to remember who the great physician is. All right, let's look at Hebrews 13, 5. It says, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, this is an important promise to me because being in a hospital bed for a few days 
with tons of doctors in and out of the room telling you that this could be a near fatal condition and we're not sure if we have to do emergency surgery on you, Sean, and then they walk out of the room. Let me tell you something, you'll really find out who you are, you'll find out really where your faith is and where you stand with the Lord. It's one thing to profess to be a Christian, but it's another thing to walk that talk and be inside of that trial or tribulation where your life is now on the line or in jeopardy. So there were many times where I was crying in that hospital bed, but you have to understand who I was crying out to, which is my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He never left me. He never failed me. He never, ever turned his back on me. And so what I'm going to do is use my current trial and tribulation I just went through as a testimony to you guys to let you know that he is real. He is with us all the time. And these promises that he made to us, he cannot break them. The other one we're going to take a look at in a moment. We're going to talk about if he went away to prepare a place that he will come again. And that is what we are about over here is watching for the rapture, watching for the Lord to take us home. Even though there's no signs leading up to it, we are commanded to be ever ready and to be watchful. So let's take a look at that next verse. And here's John 14, 3. This is beautiful and this is very special. Listen to this promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. This is true. He went away to prepare a place for us after he was crucified and rose from the dead. Jesus cannot break a promise to us. These are the things that we need to hold on to right now. These foundational verses that instill hope and faith and renew our trust in the Lord daily. He is not going to let us down and we are not destined for wrath. And I can tell you again with what I just went through, I'm sitting in this chair for a reason. I am his servant. I am his messenger and I will continue to proclaim the gospel throughout this world until he raptures us home. This is what my purpose is and I want to fill your hearts with joy and encouragement today and let you know that you're not crazy. You are confiding in the Lord. You are remaining watchful and you are doing the things that he tells us to do, which is work for the kingdom and occupy until he comes. These are the things we have to do patiently and humbly at all times. And if when we fall down or if we fall short, we are only to go back to the foot of the cross and ask for forgiveness from Jesus and nobody else. So hang on to this promise right here and keep your eyes on the prize, the prize being Jesus. The rapture is imminent, even though nobody knows the day or the time or the hour. This is a verse that I want you to take heart in and take hope in because it is true. All right, let's take a look at Romans 8:38 through 39. And at first glance, you might not see a promise inside of here, but I definitely do. And the promise that I see is that we can never lose our salvation once we accept Jesus Christ into our heart and ask him to be our personal Lord and Savior. It says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation would be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. This is very important, especially in these final moments before Jesus raptures us home, because many emails that I get, many comments that I get, or questions I get saying, Sean, is it possible for me to lose my salvation? The enemy is really getting on me, and I'm questioning whether or not I'm a real Christian or if the Lord loves me. I think that he hates me. I don't think I'm saved anymore, Sean. I wanted to use this verse and look at the camera and be very specific and to the point and saying, no, you cannot lose your salvation. Think about what that would mean if the Lord died for our sins and rose again on the third day and came out of that tomb because of perfect love and said, if you accept me into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, you will have eternal life instead of eternal death. Now, if that is the true gospel, and there was any way, shape, or form that we could lose our salvation, then what that would mean is that we have an imperfect God and that he is not good enough. And that is just not who we serve. Those are lies from the enemy. So if you're one of those people that have reached out to me and asked those questions where you're worrying about these things, I want you to refer back to Romans 8, 38 through 39 and hold on to this promise. But let me be the one to tell you today, my friend, that God is good 
His mercy and His grace are overflowing, and His favor is all upon me. I had the best staff where I was. I had many different people that were praying over me that were telling me, God has not turned his back on you, Sean. In fact, what he is doing is strengthening you right now by putting you through this because he knows when you get out of here and you begin to heal that you are going to continue to brag on him and give a testimony about what he did for you and how he saved you so that that will lift others up and renew their hope in him. Let me share this quote by C.S. Lewis for you and then we'll start wrapping up and we'll get out of here. It says, There are far far better things ahead than any we leave behind. So we have to meditate on the place that we're going and not the things that are occurring in this world or our problems that we're experiencing. These are not problems that we're going through. I'll reiterate that these trials and tribulations that Jesus allows us to go through for a reason is because power is perfected in weakness. So if we understand that, Anything that we go through, everything should fall into place, and we should understand the Lord is not trying to harm us. He is, in fact, strengthening us. Guys, I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. If the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now, or even tonight, just do what we always say over here. You keep looking up, and we'll see you up top.